Hello chess friends, today we will be taking a look at some famous rook ending positions. Rook end games are something that have been studied quite extensively and yet they are so they are so so complex. Grandmaster Paul Kers once famously said that even the best grandmasters in the world have to work hard to acquire the technique of rook endings and that is so very true. In this video I will be showing you 5 practical rook end games that are most common and they can easily uh, be encountered in your own games. But before we go there, let's le take a look at this position. Uh, it's a puzzle and it's probably one of the most famous rook ending puzzle. It's white to play and win. So you can always pause the video and try to find the answer. White here plays rook to h8. Okay, obviously he's threatening to promote the pawn with a8. So let's take a look at what happens if black uh, black captures and this is the most obvious move but white simply wins with rook check and after king e6 we take the rook okay so what happens if the king moves to g7 and attacks the rook well we simply promote and this is winning so thanks to the position of the black king white was able to play rook h8 and this is a very quiet a uh, very common tactic in uh, such kind of end games okay so let's start with our first puzzle so here we go, this is our first position. The position you see on the board is a draw with correct play and black has several drawing systems. But the easiest one is known as the fill order position and that is exactly what we are going to look at. It's black to play and black employs what's called as a third rank defense. As you can see white is threatening to uh, advance his pawn to the sixth rank with mating threats. Black generally avoids that and plays rook to g6. So this is known as the third rank defense. So what is the idea behind this move? Black's rook seizes control of the sixth rank, uh, the third rank of his third rank and uh, stops the king from advancing. Now the black rook will stay on the third rank until the moment white pushes the pawn. And once white will push the pawn, the idea is very simple. The white king can no longer hide behind the pawn and that's why we go rook to g1. And after something like king d6, all we have to do is throw in some checks and we just continuously give check and there is no way that white can escape this check and thus this is a draw. So all you have to remember in this position is to put your rook on the third rank where it can stop the king from advancing and forcing him to play e6 because in this position any kind of checks are not really working. So this is the first position we have to see this is known as the filler position it's a draw and this uh, third rank defense is rather common in most end games. Okay, so let's take a look at our second position. So here we go. This position is our second position. It's known as the Lucina position. White can easily win this one by a technique that is known as building the bridge. So it's white to play and win. You might want to pause the video and try to find it yourself. Okay, first of all, uh, as the black king is quite close and we can't really move a king. First of all, we need to drive the black king away. So first we play rook to c2, check. And now the only move that black has here is to play king to b7. Okay, why, what's wrong with king to d6, attacking the pawn? Well, white simply has king to d8, threatening to promote. And if you capture the pawn, we have rook d2, king e6, rook e2, check, and that picks up the rook. So that leaves black with only one move, that is to put his king on b7 and this is where the we start building the bridge we play rook to c4 so the rook jumps on the fourth rank that is it's re relocated two squares under the passed pawn white now plays rook d1 king f7 check king e6 king f6 and we just advance our king and finally after rook e1 we play rook to e4 so the build is the bridge is complete and the pawn can easily be promoted. For example, there's now no way to stop the pawn. He, black can simply capture and white will promote. So the whole idea of this is to build a bridge after rook to c4. It's rather an easy technique and quite a famous one. Okay, so let's take a look at our third position. So now we move on to the uh, position which is known as the first rank defense. This defense is particularly useful against uh, when the attacking side has a knight or a rook spawn. So in this position, the 
white side that is attacking side has a knight spawn so this particular technique known as the first rank defense is rather useful over here and as the name suggests white simply plays a black simply brings his rook to the first rank and that's quite an easy defense so the king stands in front of the pawn while the rook just stays on the first rank so let's take a look By the way, note that the first rank defense works only against the knight or rook's pawn and not in the case of a bishop or central pawn. That is because in those cases there will be more space on the left side of the pawn and that's why the first rank defense works easily in the case of a knight or rook's pawn. Okay, so let's take a look. White now advances his pawn and all we have to do is keep our rook on the first rank. So rook to f8. White throws in a check and here we have to be very careful something like king to c8 is a blunder and white simply goes king to a7 with several threats including rook b8 and this is actually losing so all black has to do here after rook b7 check is stay on the in the corner and uh, after rook a7 king b8 rook goes to the h7 we just play rook to g8 and keep tight and there is actually no way that white can make progress in fact after something like b6 black can start checking the white king and as you can see there is that's completely drawn so the first rank defense is a rather easy and useful one especially against when your opponent has a knight or a rook pawn so here, here we go this is a fourth uh, puzzle uh, this is known this is known as a one cover defense and it's particularly classified when the uh, pawn is on the sixth rank okay so the Vancouver defense starts after black plays king to g7 and now if we just play something like a6 and this transfer this is just a draw and we'll see this in the next position but what happens if the king advances now we play rook to f1 and this is the starting point of what is known as the Vancouver defense the king is trying to advance and shepherd the pawn and we just play rook f6 so this is the point of the Vancouver defense. The rook attacks the sixth uh, rank pawn laterally and thus if the white king approaches the pawn, the rook can deliver checks, a lot of checks and the king cannot use the pawn as a shelter. Now on the other hand, if the pawn advances, then we can always go back to our initial position and something like a7 and we play rook to a6 and that's simply a draw. Thus, white's only chance is to advance his pawn, so he plays king to d5. Now we go king b6, rook b6, king c5, rook f6, and king b5. White is now threatening to uh, move his rook because the king is protecting the pawn. Now all you have to do is start giving checks. Whenever the king is in touch with the pawn, all you have to do is start giving checks. And the checks are never ending, and black can revert back to f6 once the king is moving away from the pawn. So that was the whole point of this when cover defense. White black just keeps the rook on, um, on the sixth rank and attacks the pawn. And uh, when the white king advances, you just start checking it. So viewers, this is the last position. In this position, the pawn is has already reached the seventh rank. And uh, you might uh, you might uh, be reminded of our first position. Yes, you're right. White is threatening to play rook to h8 and he will win the game. But here it's black to play and black's defense is very, very easy. All he has to do here is keep his king on g7 and h7 and that's easily a draw. So let's take a look. After king g7, uh, there is no good check for the rook. No good move for the rook. Uh, he'll just drop the pawn. And therefore, all the best try he can do is to advance his pawn, advance his king. So king f3 and we just keep moving our king from h7 to g7 to king e4, king g7, king d5, king h7, black just keeps moving his king, king c6, king g7, king b6. Once the king is in touch with the pawn, black is now actually threatening to, uh, white is now actually threatening to move the rook. So now uh, from here on, all we have to do is start giving rare checks. So rook b1, king e6 and you just keep giving check till the king steps away from the pawn and once the king steps away from the pawn you revert to the uh, king moves you just play king h7 king g7 and that is easily draw as you can see white really doesn't have any um, uh, further progress he cannot make any further progress for example king b6 we simply play 
root to be one and we go back to the same checks and whenever he moves away from the pawn you just move your king so that's a rather easy defense so those were the five uh, important endgame rook positions thank you for watching and hope you have got something out of this uh, puzzles do subscribe to my channel and till next time